respect, honor, success, reaching heights, all this is achieved by following the Prophet of Islam, by following Islam, by following the Holy Quran. Those that were, those that were obedient to Allah and His Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they were honored in this world and the hereafter. وہ معزز تھے زمانے میں مسلمہ ہو کر تم خار ہوئے تارک قرآن ہو کر The companions ردوان اللہ تعالی علیہ مجمعین They were given the treasures from the superpowers ان کے قدموں میں خزانے تھے And they were less in number They never had weapons But they had a ro'ab They overpowered the dunya And today unfortunately as Muslims because we are away from the teachings of Islam, we are large in number. 1.6 billion Muslims there are or more. And we have weapons, we have nuclear power, but even then we are scared. And right now we are all overwhelmed with the situation in Palestine. Okay, there's a ceasefire that's taken place, but that doesn't mean that uh, the Israel, the apartheid state will stop occupying lands that belong to Palestine. That doesn't mean that they're going to stop this brutality and they're going to stop torturing and killing innocent civilians in Palestine. Today, inshallah, I want to speak about the sanctity, the hurmat of Masjid Aqsa and then even Muslims because the hurmat of Muslims is more than even the Kaaba. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was doing Tawaf and he said to the Kaaba that you are very qabil ihtiram but the truth is the hurmatul muslim the sanctity of a believer is more greater according to Allah than your sanctity as well than you as well so inshallah today I want to say a few ahadith what do, what do the sayings of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mention what does the Quran say about Masjid Aqsa so first of all, Baytul Maqdis, what, did, what does this mean? It means pure house, blessed place. And this is Qibla Awwal. The Sahaba, they say, Sallayna ma'an Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam nahwa Baytul Maqdis sittata ashar aw sab'ata ashara shahra. They faced towards Baytul Maqdis and prayed salah for either 16 or 17 months. Thumma sarafahu nahwa al-Qibla. And then, the Qibla changed. So this Baytul Maqdis, this is Qibla Awwal for us. And we all need to understand that what's happening there, and it's been over 100 years, this is not an Arab and Jew issue. This is a Muslim and Jews. This is our issue. This is our Qibla. This is our first Qibla. So with regards to Qibla Awwal, Jerusalem, Palestine, Masjid Aqsa, it has a great affiliation and nisbat with many, many Anbiya alayhim salam So if we look at the first verse from the 15th Jews, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, Glorified is the one who took his servant by night from Masjid Haram to Masjid Aqsa. Here, during the night journey, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He made the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam travel from Masjid Haram to Masjid Aqsa. Why? So that we all understand the virtues and the greatness of Masjid Aqsa. And then he doesn't just say Masjid Aqsa. He speaks about Masjid Aqsa and he says, Alladhi barakna hawlahu. That we have made its irdgird, its surroundings blessed. And the mufassirin they say, Yuridu bi barakati deen wa dunya. What this means is, this place is full of the blessings of deen and dunya. لِيَنَّهُ مُتَعَبَّدُ الْأَنْبِيَا مِنْ وَقْتِ مُوسَى Because after Musa a.s. Since Musa a.s. The Anbiya a.s. They were spending their time there in Jerusalem. وَمَهْبَتُ الْوَحْي This is a place where wahi and revelation would descend upon the prophets. And then the Mufassirin they said This is a place which is full of canals. بِالْأَنْهَارِ وَالْأَشْجَارِ It's full of trees and fruits. So this place, Masjid Aqsa, Palestine, it is very, very blessed. And many, many Anbiya alayhi salam, 
they are buried there also. And actually Musa Islam, he prayed to be buried there. So this is the place during the night journey where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he got to Masjid Aqsa, the Anbiya Alayhi Wasallam were there. Some were standing, some were in the bowing position, some were in sujood, and he recognizes them. And how many Anbiya? 124,000 Kamubesh Anbiya. And then, not only Anbiya, there were angels there also. So they say that when you go there, you know that the place you are standing on, this is where a Nabi prayed. This is where a Nabi stood also. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he led the Anbiya Alayhi Wasallam in prayer in Masjid Aqsa, SubhanAllah. And many, many Anbiya Alayhi Wasallam, they have a nisbat with Masjid Aqsa. For example, Sayyiduna Ibrahim Alayhi Wasallam spent time there. Sayyiduna Yaqub Alayhi Wasallam. Hazrat Musa Alayhi Wasallam, he ordered the Bani Israel to gather there when Firaun, he drowned and his, his army as well. Dawood alayhi salam, he became king. So after Musa alayhi salam, when he became king. So it's mentioned, I'll just mention this quickly, quickly to you. Brother Ishar knows about this, mashallah, because I was delivering daily sermons during Ramadan. So when we were giving the summary of the second Jews, I mentioned this. Allah says in the Quran, last ruku of second Jews, alam tara ilal mala'i min bani Israel min ba'di Musa. So after Musa alayhi salam, there was the Prophet, his name was Shamweel alayhi salam. So the people, they said that, you know, this Maliqa, they've uh, overpowered, of, uh, overpowered us, they've taken our land, they've taken us away from our sons, and uh, we want you to nominate a king for us, and we want to fight them. So a king was selected, Talut his name was. MashaAllah, brother Izhar and his sons are very tall. Talut was very tall. So Shamweel alayhi salam, he got a stick. And he said, I'm going to nominate a king who's as tall as this stick. And it was Talut. He was chosen as a king and uh, he said, yeah, he's more than you lot in ilm and jism. So he became the king and, the, and Shamweel alayhi salam said, one of the signs that Talut is your king is that he will bring the tabut e sakina. What's tabut e sakina? This was around from the time of Musa alayhi salam, from Adam alayhi salam. This tabut it had the pictures of the Anbiya alayhi salam. It had the holy relics of Musa alayhi salam and Harun alayhi salam. So it had, for example, the Na'alain, the shoes of Musa alayhi salam. It had his clothes. It had the, it had the imama of uh, Harun alayhi salam and his asa, his stick also. So what the Bani Israel would do is the sons of Israel, they would place it before them. They would do dua, their duas would be accepted and they would, they, would be, they would succeed in whatever task they had. So that would give them contentment. So that's why it was called tabut e sakina So this tabut e sakina it was lost. Amalika attacked them and they, they lost it. Amalika took it and they, they, they were doing ihanat of this uh, tabut e sakina they, was, they were humiliating it. They were disrespecting it. So what happened was calamities came their way. So they realized, so they left it. So this way, this tabut the angels, they pass it on to the Bani Israel. So Talut, he brought this Talut. So this, this way, they all realize that he is a king. So then they go to fight the Imalika. And uh, Talut says to them, Okay, Allah is going to test you. No one's allowed to drink any water from this uh, canal. Whoever does, he's going to get more thirsty. His lips will go black. So most of them did drink. So... He said, you can only have a handful of water. So basically, they pass by and then there was only 313 of them. And then they come across Goliath. You probably heard of David and Goliath, Dawood alayhi salam and Jalut. So it was Jalut's army. And uh, what happened was they were struggling. And uh, so the, the prophet of the time, he was told that it'll be Dawood alayhi salam. Dawood alayhi salam was the youngest from his brothers and his dad was fighting as well. And he was told... So Shamweel alayhi salam told Talut that it will be Dawood alayhi salam that will kill Goliath. Goliath was massive. So, so Talut said, whoever kills this Jalut, he can marry my daughter and I will give him half of my kingdom. So this is what happens. وَقَتَلَ دَاوُودُ جَالُوتَ وَآتَاهُ اللَّهُ الْمُلْكَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ So Dawood alayhi salam killed Jalut and this way, you know, he goes on to become king. So I was mentioning with regards to Dawood alayhi salam that when he became king, he made this Baytul Maqdis his capital. 
And after Dawud alayhi salam, it was Sulaiman alayhi salam, and also Sulaiman alayhi salam, he made Baytul Maqdis his capital also. Sulaiman alayhi salam was the one, was the one that built, he, mashallah, he completed the ta'amiri work of Masjid Aqsa. And when he finished, he made this dua, Sa'alallaha azza wa jalla thalathan. He made three duas, and in another narration, he made five duas. These three duas here in this one narration is mentioned. He said, and yu'tiya hukman yusadifu hukma. He asked Allah that I want my fasla, my decisions to be according to your will. And then he said, wa mulkan la yambaghi li ahadim min ba'di. Give me such a kingdom that no one has had such a kingdom. And Sulaiman alayhi salam, he ruled the entire world. He had the jinns that were working for him. He had birds that were working for him. And then he also made this dua that, Ya Allah, لَا يَأْتِي هَذَا الْمَسْجِدِ أَحَدٌ لَا يُرِيدُ إِلَّا صَلَاةَ فِيهِ إِلَّا خَرَجَ مِن ذُنُوبِهِ كَيَوْمِ وَلَدَتْهُ أُمُّهُ Whoever comes here to read namaz, when he leaves, he should be pure from his sins like he was just born. He made more duas. It's mentioned in the books of tafsir that when he completed the ta'amiri work, he... He turns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he thanks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the ability and he sacrificed 12,000 cows and bulls and 20,000 sheep and he held a da'wat aam, open da'wat for everyone to come and, and eat. So he made this dua also that, Ya Allah, whoever comes to Masjid Aqsa for safety, Ya Allah, you give him that aman and remove that khawf from him, that fear. Whoever comes to Masjid Aqsa and is not well, Ya Allah, you grant them cure. He made dua, Ya Allah, whoever comes here until they are in this masjid, don't turn your mercy away from them. These were the duas that Sulaiman made. And let me tell you with regards to Sulaiman He finished the work, but there was a bit of work left in Masjid Aqsa. And he told the jinns to complete this. And this is mentioned in the Quran and many of you will not know this. فَلَمَّا قَضَيْنَا عَلَيْهِ الْمَوْتَ He went to his mihrab, he got hold of his stick, he was either standing or sitting, and he died. He passed away. Sulaiman salam passed away and he stayed there for one year. No one knew about this. Even the jinns, they were, they were working. So what happened was, it was his stick that this spider, it was eating through it. And the stick fell and Sulaiman also fell down one year. This is when they realized what, what would happen is the jinns, they were very quick to get information. So people thought that these jinns know ilm ghayb the unseen knowledge. So the purpose of all this was Sulaiman he went, he passed away. But he knew that if these are know that I passed away, they're not going to finish the work off. And also the purpose was, the wisdom was, so that people realize that these jinns, they are not ma'bud, they are not gods, they don't know the knowledge of the unseen. So this was Sulaiman alayhi salam, mashallah. So after Sulaiman alayhi salam, from this story we realize that death is going to come to all of us. It doesn't matter how big of a king you are, everyone, whoever comes to this world has to die. And also what we realize is, it's not just enough becoming the king. It's not just enough becoming the MP. Your, you will be successful when your government is according to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So after Sulaiman alayhi salam, this, uh, the sons of Israel, the Bani Israel, you all know what Israel is. Israel was the title of Yaqub alayhi salam, isn't it? Israel. It was a title given to Hazrat Yaqub alayhi salam. So the sons of Israel, they went astray. So again, the tabut sakina it was taken away from them. And it was Bakht Nasr who attacked them and he caused havoc in, uh, in Palestine. So with regards to uh, Palestine, I'll just mention one, two uh, hadith, inshallah. Then I'll carry on with a bit of history, inshallah. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was asked, which is the first masjid that's been established on this earth? And he said, Masjid al Haram. And then he was asked, Summa ayyu, then which masjid? 
And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Masjid Aqsa. So then he was asked, Wakam baynahuma? How much of a gap was there between the two masjids? And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Arba'una ama, 40 years. So 40 years after Masjid Haram was built, Masjid Aqsa was built. Now let's talk about Masjid Aqsa reading namaz there. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, if you want to travel, travel to three places. Masjid Haram, Masjid Nabwi, and Masjid Aqsa. And فضل الصلاه في المسجد الحرام على غيره مئة ألف صلاة. Reading namaz in Masjid Haram is equal to reading 100,000 prayers in other masajid. وفي مسجد ألف صلاة. Reading namaz in Masjid Nabwi is equal to reading 1,000 prayers in other masajid. وفي مسجد بيت المقدس خمس مئة صلاة. And reading in Masjid Aqsa you get the reward of reading 500 prayers. Subhanallah. And there's a hadith of Jabir that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was asked, who will be the first one to enter Jannah? And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, al-anbiya, the prophets alayhi wa sallam. And then he said, thumma shuhada, then the martyrs. And then he said, the muazzin of the Kaaba." And then he said, after that, the muazzin of Baytul Maqdis, the muazzin of Masjid Aqsa, he will enter Jannah. And then he said, the muazzin of my masjid. And then he said, the rest of the muazzins. So, mashallah, I urge you, law, bro, you brothers that before, mashallah, it was me and Imam Saab. So, I used to do three azans, he would do two azans. Now I'm on my own. So, I'm giving you an option. Is there anyone that would like to give Zuhar Azan? Is there anyone that would like to do Asr Azan? Is there anyone that would like to give Maghrib Azan? Is there ever anyone that would like to give Isha Azan? Yeah. MashaAllah, we haven't got a problem with Jumar Azan. But it'll be nice, MashaAllah, if you could give me some company with uh, the other Azans. And uh, there's a lot of reward for giving Azan. If you, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, if you lot knew the reward in reading in the first Saf and giving the Azan, then you would cast lots to give the azan. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was asked by Hazrat Maymuna. So she said that, tell me something about Baytul Maqdis. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, this is Ardul Mahshar. This is a place of gathering, place of resurrection. And then she said, okay, tell me something. He said, go and read namaz in Masjid Aqsa. Because reading namaz there is equal to 1,000. So in the other narration, it was 500. Here, 1,000. And then she said that, what if there's someone that doesn't have the taqat? You can't travel there. Then, then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, فَتُهْدِي لَهُ زَيْتًا يُسْرَجُ Then send some tail, send some oil that can be used as the lantern for the lantern. And the scholars, what they say is, what this means is, assist. Masjid Aqsa, assist the people of Masjid Aqsa. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, if you do this, فَمَنْ فَعَلَى لَكْ فَهُوَ كَمَنْ أَتَهُ It will be like you actually visited Masjid Aqsa. So, mashallah, we have it really easy. We have the brother, is his name Khalid from Al-Waha. Mashallah, he, every year he collects donations for Masjid Aqsa. So, we should, uh, we should act upon this hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and we should donate generously. In one narration, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that this uh, Jerusalem, Palestine, لِيَنَّ مَلَائِكَةَ الرَّحْمَانِ بَاسِتَةٌ أَجْنِحَتَهَا عَلَيْهَا The malaika, the angels of Rahman, they actually spread their wings there. So it's very, very holy, very, very blessed place. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to visit Masjid Aqsa again and again. So I was mentioning many Anbiya alayhi salam, they have a khususi nisbat with Masjid Aqsa. Even Isa alayhi salam, he announced his prophethood there. And after that, so let's look at a bit of history. So it was the Romans and Persians, they were fighting over Palestine during them days. And then there was the battle of Ajnadain during the time of Umar radiallahu anhu. And this was fought near Beit Guvrin. This is part of Israel right now. And Amr bin As. So they, 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 they defeated 
they, they conquered this, they won this battle. And what happened was the leader of the army, he said, okay, you won this battle, but you can't conquer Palestine. So his men, they asked, that, how do you know this? He said that it's mentioned in our books, our elders have told us, there'll be this particular individual that will conquer Palestine, and he's not the one, Amr bin As radiallahu anhu isn't the one. So Hazrat Abu Ubaidah bin Jarrah, he was the leader of the army, and they were going towards Palestine, and they couldn't conquer the castle, it had been four months. So what happened was this priest, he got on the castle and he said, only one man can conquer Palestine, and that's not you. And he said, okay, give me, what are the signs? So they said, the signs are mentioned. So it's mentioned in the books that it'll be this individual that's like this, he'll have these qualities, and his name will consist of three letters. So Hazrat Abu Ubaidah, he said, subhanallah, we've, we've conquered this, that's Umar. So he wrote to Umar. So the priest said, bring that individual. If he's the one, I will hand you over the keys without even fighting. And this is what happened. Sayyiduna Umar radiallahu anhu, he comes and uh, they, they hand over the keys to Sayyiduna Umar radiallahu anhu. And uh, he gives safety to whoever was there, the Christians, the Jews. And for 400 years, Palestine was with the Muslims. And then 1099, the Christians took over it for 88 years. And then Sultan Salahuddin Ayyubi, 1187, again, he took over Palestine. And then 700 years, Palestine was with the Muslims. So it's only been 100 years. So you all know more than me what happened in 1917, the Balfour Declaration. Before that, you had the Ottoman Empire. And one of the reasons why they put an end to the Ottoman Empire was because Sultan Abdul Hamid, he wasn't ready to sell Palestine. And this is why they put an end to this Ottoman Empire. Once it came to an end, that's it, 1917, this Balfour Declaration takes place. And you all, you all know there was only 8% Jews living in Palestine at the time. 92 were the Christians and the Muslims. And then 1948, when Britain left, and then that's it, since then, large-scale ethnic cleansing has been taking place. They're trying to delete Palestine from the map. You probably hear these, uh, these politicians, they don't even mention the word, the country, Palestine. 700,000 Palestinians, they were kicked out from their homes, 15,000 killed just in one, one year. And this is happening, okay, there's been a ceasefire, but this brutality, it's not coming to an end. And occupation also, they've occupied lands that belong to Palestine. Also, you know, even then, there was only, there were less Jews, even after all this migration from Europe, all these Jews coming to uh, Palestine, uh, with, they were given free, free passports. Even then, Uske Bawajud, they were given 65% of Palestine. And uh, we all make dua, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, may you have mercy. And I request you, brothers, this is what the scholars are saying, i finish with this. What can we do here in the West? We seek assistance only from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our local namazis, they were mentioning that, can you mention in Jummah that the masjid is open? So these lights, they might be switched off. We're reading in that hall. So if you want to protest, Subhanallah, you protest. Very, very important. You go and protest. And, you know, get hold of your MPs and your councillors. Get hold of them. Raise your voice. Use your social media platforms. But protest in the masjid also. Come to the masjid also and turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What did that Palestinian child say? He said that we read six namazes a day. We read Fajr, Zohar, Asr, Maghrib, Isha and Janazah namaz also. So come here and do dua. For our Palestinian brothers and sisters, dua is the weapon of a believer. And come to the masjid. And also, I urge all of my brothers and sisters that you should boycott their products. And be very careful. What they're doing is, their products, their writing produced in Palestine. So be very, very careful. And this will definitely hurt them. Very important for us that we should attend these uh, protests. And we should uh, raise our voice. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, if you see something, you see munkar, you see evil, then stop it with your tongue. If you can't stop it with your tongue, stop it with your hands. If, if, if you can't stop it, with, so first he said your hands, then he said your tongue. And then he said, if you can't, then, then with your heart, usko bura janu. 
And the Sahaba, the, the, the ulama, they say, ذَلِكَ أَضْعَفُ iman. This is the weakest of iman. They say that if you don't feel anything, our Muslim brothers and sisters are dying. So if, that, this is a sign that you have no iman. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant liberation to our Muslim brothers and sisters in Palestine. Allah Rabbul Alameen give our brothers and sisters in the entire world safety and protect them. Allah Rabbul Alameen help them. Allah grant them respect. Allah grant Islam respect. Allah grant them patience. Allah grant them steadfastness. Allah Rabbul Alameen raise their ranks. We make dua for our brother Masood. His father sadly passed away in Pakistan. Allah Rabbul Alameen. Everyone recite Surah Fatiha and Surah Ikhlas three times. And uh, جو سواب ہے وہ ان کے والد صاحب کی روح کو پیش کریں بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم اللہ رب العالمین تمام مرحومین کی بخشش و مغفرت فرمائے and we make dua for all those that aren't well اللہ رب العالمین grant them shifa Especially Brother Shahzad Ditta, his father isn't well, he's hospitalized. Allah Rabbul Alameen, unhe bhi mukammal tandrusti ata farmai. And our brothers and sisters in Palestine that are injured, Allah Rabbul Alameen, have mercy upon them. Allah Rabbul Alameen, grant them shifai kamila ajila daima mustamira. Those that have been martyred, Allah Rabbul Alameen, unhe bohot unche martabe naseef farmai.